Okay, so we're putting together this Billy bookcase with the glass doors. Um, I got it in this like turquoise. It says it's turquoise, but it's more of like a sage or like a gray blue. Um, but I think it'll go nice because all the rest of the stuff in my mudroom is white. And I'm getting rid of basically this because I didn't like looking at this um, every time I was in the mudroom and I wanted it to be more clean. So I'm using this Billy bookcase as a shoe rack. So step one in this tutorial is make sure you take these ones. And again, I'm, I have put together Ikea stuff all the time, but sometimes you make little mistakes. So I thought I record it step by step instead of showing you like some time lapse video. So you need to put the little pegs, you need to put the little pegs in the outside of each of these that are colored and then these. And that's step one. And then step two, this is the part that always gets you. I always do it the wrong way first. Let's see if I get it right the first time. So put them out like a mirror in the third and second. Second and third. Right? No, see? That one's on the inside. That one's on the outside. And see, this is where I always mess it up. Let's see. It's fairly easy. Um... It's just a matter of lining this up properly, uh, like that. And then there's only one place where those screws can go in. So you're actually safe. Uh, you probably won't mess it up. Uh, be sure not to strip the screws. And um, yeah, it's every other one. See, there's only, it won't fit in that one. And it won't fit in that one. So it'll only fit in one place and that's the way you line it up so that you have it exactly like uh, in the diagram. Okay, over here. so the next step says to use, so we did that and then the next step says to make sure you get this one, the one that has the little dip facing out to the right. So if you see how I set it up, it's not this one, it's that one. And when you do it, make sure you put this one in and just a little bit of pressure to make it, make the dowels hit uh, in the proper spaces and make sure that the raw side is facing out to the right where that dip is, that little J part of it. And then you do the same thing all the way up for all three and just put a little pressure. Don't hammer it to ruin the fake wood vibe. Um, just a little pressure to get it into place and then you're going to put those little screw caps over them. See the next step says to put the black screw caps which is in group one. These ones over each of the dowels. You make sure you catch it this way. You put it in and then you you can use a butter knife or a flathead screwdriver and just turn it so it locks into place. See? You just gotta turn okay, it. So down. I made a mistake. This the screw holes down there, I had them facing this way. They're supposed to face that way. Okay? That was my mistake. And then the other one is supposed to have the screw holes facing outside, but I did it inside. And I can't change it um, because I already screwed them. And it doesn't take away from the aesthetic as long as all the non-natural sides are facing one way. Okay, so that one's done. This one's done with the screw covers and that one's done. So this step of putting it on and then putting the screw covers on was not so difficult. What's gonna be difficult is standing this up, maybe on my own. So the next step was to put the backboard in. And when you put it in, especially for the middle part here, uh, you have to make a little line so you know where the shelf is that you nail in about five or six of these across. I can probably put one more here. Uh, you got to do it at the bottom level, the third, the second level, and the third level up there. It is quite big. Um, it's as big as our door frames. This is what it looks like from the inside. It's a nice color again. It's going to go nicely when I paint our old one. Um, so yeah, so now it's up. The backboard's on. Um, and we've lifted it up and now I'm just gonna do the next couple of steps and then of course you have to mount it to the wall. I think I was concerned with how big it would be, but I'm about 5'3", and that's where that goes and it just continues. So 
it's quite big. Uh, it's going to be great for shoes. And then if we need to put more shoes in, we can add more shelves. So I think it's definitely bigger than this one. As you can see the difference in size. So it's going to have a lot more space. But yes. Now for the most important part, you've got to secure this to the wall. And uh, my cousin, he knows who he is, taught me a long time ago an easy way to do it to not have to change from a drill bit to this is take the screw and put it in, in the drywall. Um, this kit does not come with uh, drywall anchors, so please get some. Uh, I'm surprised they don't. Usually IKEA does give it. So what I do is I, I drill through with this first, and then I just open it up just a little bit. To be able to get this through sorry i have to edit this but basically to get this through and then get this in here nicely hey is it gonna work the first time i try yeah and then you hammer it in very gently very gently okay very gently you don't want to open those up before it gets into the anchors or before it gets into the drywall the other side already done it's secured to the bookcase it's secured to the wall um you can see that the anchor is there and holding it uh i would even suggest if it was a heavier bookcase it's not too heavy um because it's being held up perfectly by one screw there's quite a big gap here because of the baseboard um but yeah um definitely need to anchor this thing to the wall because i'm sure once the doors are on it's going to be even more front heavy that's what it looks like um, without the doors on it. It's secured to the wall. Um, now, now, time to open package number two and vacuum here and put that in. I'm thinking the lower part should be bigger and the top part should be bigger for like boots, but I might change that. It's kind of strange looking. And I'm definitely gonna need more shelves. I don't think that's enough shelves, but we shall see. So the last step, is to put these guys on each of those circles. So it's like this, I've set it up like that so that they're outside of each other as per the diagram. Okay, so that's the best way to do it. Um, okay, so I've set up the doors and you're gonna put these little guys with these screws in um, to each of the doors, right? So according to the diagram, each one, each one, teach one, right? That's it. And then these two in. Okay, so the last step to put the doors on is to literally just lift this up and make sure that this screw, which is on this part, goes in there. And then you just slide all three of those units into place, right? And then you just tighten it, you tighten these, and then you can close it on both sides. And then if you need to adjust it, like when you close it, it might have a gap that you might not like. And then that's where you can um, adjust the pulls. If you adjust the tightness here, it'll close the gap here. Thing, last step, but there's always another step. So these are pre-drilled on the inside. So what you do is you drill it through and then you put the knob on. And the knob is there. Ta-da! It's done. Holy cow, my, it's so hot in here and it's done. I think I'm gonna have to buy more shelves for this thing so that it actually uses its full potential. Um, yeah, it fit with just enough space with the coat hanger and the vent. Okay. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a film so that you can't see through these. And yeah, most of the shoes are in there. I definitely need two shelves more 